Welcome to Visuals for Your meeting Media. Stop taking shitty photos. Um, <laughs> so this class, or this session, is a public service announcement. This is your basic 101. You don't have a blog, you don't have a Facebook page, you don't have anything, and, or your photos just look horrible, how to make them look better. So there's maybe some things that you're like, duh, that's a tripod, and duh, that's a selfie stick, but um, how to use them more for the visual, the media world, like your Facebook page, Twitter, blogging, things like that. We're going to first cover like equipment, then some lighting, which is very simple. Um, editing, I'm going to show you some really fun apps to use on your phone or iPad or um, tablet and some editing, which will include editing and some filters, things like that, beyond Instagram. So this isn't just going to be Instagram heavy. Uh, and then do's and don'ts, tips and secrets, and then some t room for a QA. and a And there will also be some examples of good photos and bad photos. Um, yes, and I deliberately took them bad <laughs> the past few weeks. So, so equipment. Equipment is probably a really important one of the most important parts of this, just because there's so much you can use. And I say that, be and they're not that expensive. So you don't have to go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on equipment to make your photos look nice or professional or block it or, or not block the lighting in the, in the room that you're in and things like that. So you can start with very simple, your tripod. 20 to $30 at Walmart, literally folds up, goes in a bag, and you can carry it anywhere with you. It will handle DSLR or film camera, but you can also get an attachment for your phone. So these attachments range in price. You can sometimes buy them for like five, ten dollars to up to $40, $50 sometimes that also have lighting attachments to the top of them. And I'll show you an example in a little bit of one that it has a lighting attachment that goes with it. Something like this is very simple. Um, I recently, one of the fun things I got to do was go to a press release where I could set my camera up, my phone up, right on here and record the entire press release. No needing to take notes, no need to sit there and decide what's a good picture or the awkward movements or their mouth is open or anything like that. I could record the entire thing, go back in through editing, grab a picture and throw it up, like put it up. So it was perfect. And that just ran the entire time that the person was talking. I didn't need to fuss with it or anything. Everybody else in the news place, of course, is carrying those big heavy cameras or they're like tweeting or they're all over the place. They're cameras were going like this, their phones and everything, and they were taking horrible video. Um, so something as simple as this can really enhance what you're showing online. Um, even smaller, so something used for a conference just like this is a monopod. Same type of attachment on the top, but you can basically just, it's a steadier. So you're not everywhere with your phone or your camera you're able to take really nice photos and it's really great to walk with. People can get out of your way. It's also really great if you've ever been late at night in the city, in a strange city. I took this New York City with me once and nobody messed with me. Because <laughs> literally I could carry this and I'd be fine. Um, so it is really nice. It's got like, it's pointing on the end too so it can really definitely um, stick to carpet and things, and there's different height adjustments. So something like this is very simple. Again, same price range, very affordable. And you can find these at anywhere from Walmart to Target to um, photo places and online. And that's called a monopod, so. Your gorilla pod, these are even more fun. If you're ever shooting outdoors, this can go onto a railing or a tree or anything like that. And then your phone just gets attached to it too. Be a little weary with these though, and this, the heavier this gets, the more it's likely to fall off of it. These aren't exactly, they make longer ones that can wrap and actually do like really a tight, tight grip. So it all depends on what you want to use it for. This one was like a $5 one at Walmart. 
in like the $5 bin. So really affordable. And then this one, we all know what this one is, the super annoying one, <laughs> the selfie stick. So this is, this is my PSA on this, and this is my personal belief. A lot of people are like, oh, selfie sticks are amazing and they're great. There's only two proper places for this. That is, if you are shooting a crowd, like at a conference, or you have a big group of people and you want some to take the photo, get a higher end one. This one is a Wi-Fi con uh, Bluetooth connected. So there's not something that's touching my phone. It's attached through Bluetooth. So the trigger button's down here. I don't have to set the 10 second timer and keep going like this. This one here, I just press the button down here. Another great tip, and this is my first tip, this can take care of nasty shadows when you're doing a helicopter shot. So does everybody know what a helicopter shot is? So it's when you have like a table full of food and you want to take it from up above. How many times have you saw a chair to get that shot, right? Take your selfie stick, you can step away and take it. You're not blocking a shadow and you have the whole entire table in the shot. And you don't have to worry about anything. Like, you won't fall, you won't fall onto the table, which I've seen happen at places and everything else. So that's my first fun tip. If you are gonna use a selfie stick, there's something interesting you can use it for instead of, the, I saw a no-no the other night on this. Um, somebody was recording video like this, walking through a crowd. I said, that is going to look horrible. So be wary of that. Do not, I literally went up and I was like, can I go tell him like that video should not be up on YouTube? It was at a concert too. I was like, he's just going to put that up later on YouTube and try to score hits off of it. It's going to be wobbly and everything else with the wind blowing and everything. It's not, this is not made for that. <laughs> So that's good for equipment. Like I said, this is really simple. This is just one example. I'll show this a little bit more in depth because with the way photography is going now, more and more phones are being used. There are tablet ones available of this with mic attachments and non-mic attachments. So if you are doing something like video or anything like that and you want a microphone attached, you can definitely do that. There's a really cool one by a company named Joby right now that it is a monopod, tripod, and selfie stick all in one. You can actually, um, the bottom crops out, slides in, and then also the top angles out. So it's all three built into one. So it's pretty cool. If you're going to invest some real money in it, that's a, that's a really cool one to do. Um, I did not check the retail on it, but it's uh, like closer to 7580. Yeah, it's by Joby. It may be even up over 100. J O B Y. They make tripods and um, gorilla pods, selfie sticks. They make a whole line of things like that. Um, Moto Frodo is another one, too. They're getting really wild with their tripods. Um, and they do the attachments for lighting, and they're really good. They, uh, they have, like, huge ones that you can attach, like, a uh, lighting system to the top, but it's still small. It's only this big. Like, it'll carry around in your – I carry this with me all the time, like, on a tee, and it's perfect. Like, I don't ever have to worry about big equipment coming with me. Um, but M Moto Frodo is another one that's really, really good. Um, Zeiss is another company. Their lenses are usually typically DSLR. They have branched into iPhone and Droid lenses. And we'll talk about lenses in a second because um, there's only really, like, there's a few lenses out there that are really can enhance, it, enhance your photography on your phones. Um, Zeiss is the bigger one. That's like $300 for a wide end. And they're used to making... Um, DSLR lenses, so they're pretty well known among the photography community. So this has been around for Yeah, literally. Like when we saw them come into uh, it recently, when we saw them released for like iPhone, a lot of us went, oh my gosh. <laughs> like 
the, the lens, it's got this whole thing and it's got a pad to protect your phone and all this stuff and it's got a wide angle lens. So um, it'll be able to kind of pan, instead of shooting a place this big, it turns your camera view into this big. So you don't have to just like crop or do a pano when you're in a certain situation, those lenses come really in handy. So this one here was by Me Photo. This one was like $20, and that's it. So it'll attach on, and you're able to just move your phone around, do whatever you need to, and like I said, this very easily screws right onto your monopod or tripod. And you're able to go around wherever you're at and take any type of photo or video. Very simple. And it will steady it so you're not all over the place. That's the worst about videos, by the way, is when you're all over the place. You can lose a viewer in the first three seconds if your camera is all over. Um, that is a real statistic. And, I mean, you'll count as a play if you're watching plays on things like Facebook and uh, YouTube. But if you're really trying to get your content out there, if they're not staying through the first ten seconds, you're not getting your message across that number really doesn't mean anything. So you wanna make sure your video is up there. And it's not always like, with this whole like Facebook Live and things like that, make sure you're studied first, then hit the button. Like so many times people come off Facebook Live and they're all over the place and they're shooting and literally they've lost that person within the last first few minutes, they're gone. Because they did not catch the attention in the first two seconds. So with Facebook Live and Twitter and Periscope, it's all the same way. You want to catch them in the first two seconds or else if you're shooting bad video and it's horrible right off the bat, they're going to move on. They're just going to flip to the next one. Um, so that's kind of these that you can get. Um, and again, they also make tablet attachments. So if you want to use a tablet for anything, um, Padcaster is a really good one too. Uh, you can get for an iPad or even a, like a Samsung tablet. Um, they have mic attachments, things like that. You can use it as a teleprompter if you are doing like self um, ones or you could shoot video with it too. So if you want something like a bigger screen, that kind of helps. Um, one of the things I can tell you is with the newer tablets, they do things like split screen. So you can have your notes and be recording self-video this way with the mic pointed towards you. So if you are interested in kind of doing a self kind of video, like vlogging or whatever, um, if you put a podcaster onto a tripod, a tripod, you can do something like a split screen where your notes are on one side, your video is shooting you here, the mic is attached, you have great sound quality and a steady camera right off the bat. So, and that's a little bit pricier, everyone, but it's worth it if you're going to invest the money in this. This one here, actually, I did want to bring up one more. So, if you are in a high action situation, this is like a $400 tri uh, uh, tripod. It's actually a monopod. So, what this does, I wanted one here, and my friend was actually going to loan me one because it's way out of my price range, and I'll never use it. He actually could shoot full range video on his um, iPhone because you know iPhones do 4K now. Video, um, you can do entire movies and things like that on iPhones. For instance, a lot of like Pittsburgh Died is filmed completely on an iPhone. Things like that. Um, this is a high action tripod. So what this will do is when you are here and you are filming, you can actually move the stick, so if you're in a high action movement, the phone will stay steady. So this will actually rotate around and the phone will stay in one place. It's actually really cool. Like I said, it's really pricey. There is an attachment on the top for your for lighting, um, but you can do things like driving in a car. The phone will stay steady. The stick can move up and down in the wind and the phone will stay completely um, still so you can actually record high action shots without the wobble in this. So that's a higher end one, um, the Feo Tech. They're um, G4 Pro Access. It's really neat though, I really like it. It's, I've gotten to play with it, it's pretty awesome. 
Um, like I said, it, it's just way out of my price range for what I do. I typically at like news conferences where I get to just stand there and listen to a person talk. This is more like if you're going to make a small feature film and you want any type of action from a phone or from like a tablet, this would be something you'd want to invest in. That's not right out of the box. Hmm? It's not steady right out of the box. No, you have to, you have to calibrate it. But you also have to learn how to use it. Yeah. It, there, there are many videos online on how to use it and things like that, but it, there is a calibration to it, too. Yeah, but it, it's, it's not, none of that technology is, is perfectly steady right out of the box. No. And especially not at the $400 picture. No. Okay. Um, yeah, so the lenses are what I was, um, this is an Olo clip. So this is one of the more, um, user-friendly and also uh, better price point when it comes to lenses on your phone. This one is a typical four-in-one. It could do a micro and macro lens, a wide angle, and a fisheye. So if you're looking for those type of effects on your phone, the Olo Clip is a little bit, is friendlier price point and you can get all that in one. Um, O-I-L-O. And they have many different lenses. So if you just want like a micro or macro, um, there's a special lens for that. There is a four-in-one. There is also a um, the fisheye and then the wide angle. These price points are a little bit friendlier. Um, they range, though, however, from your Apple Store to Amazon to wherever you're going to buy it. Um, they're small. They literally are like this big on a phone. Um, and so they typically come with lanyards and some clips so that you can carry them around your neck easy in and out, be able to change them. Um, the Pittsburgh Pirates use these on their phones. When the, the, the people who actually walk around and do the social media, like in the club area and things, they actually carry all these around their neck. So, and they'll shoot from their iPhone and tweet right there. So this is actually something that's used on a day-to-day -day basis. And it, it's a, it's, I like these lenses. They're pretty nice. I guess at a better price point than the $300 um, Zeiss one. Um, and they, they do really well. So lighting. So that's kind of the equipment end. Um, but lighting is always important. So when you have, there's two typical points to it. You're always stuck with natural lighting, of course, if you're in a place that you're not allowed to shooting and I say that only because like for instance if you're blogging and you're a food critic and you don't want them to know that you're a food blogger so you're all of a sudden subject to their lighting because of course you can't pull out your light and set up the whole scene they're gonna kinda get suspicious and at that point they're like oh you know <laughs> they're gonna either change their service or they're gonna say something um, this is if you were gonna do it like in your house or you're doing some type of promotion work and you are able to come in and set up a kind of lighting scheme. The most, the most common one is the triangle, which is basically you want your main light, a fill light, and a backlight. There was a great video and I couldn't find it and it was actually made in 2005 um, by Steve Garfield who is like one of the grandfathers of video blogging. Um, he actually made a great video that shows how to do this. I just could not find it on YouTube anymore. I watched it 10 years ago at a pod camp in Boston, but literally he, uh, it was like a backlight was his lamp, which sat next to him. He had a main light there, which could have just been another lamp with the light shade change to point towards him and another light. And it just kind of evened it out so that he didn't have any awkward shadows or anything like that, but he had he was completely surrounded. Nor did he look flushed. Because that's the other side. You have to watch how many wattages you use because you could look flushed. That's why most time if you go to a professional photographer, you'll see that these are covered with filters and things like that because you, they don't want to flush out, make you look ghostly white um, or flush out or make you look sick in any way because it will take all the, the tone out of your skin color, basically. Isn't that nice way to say it? You won't be like all over... And it just can totally 
make bad lighting can make you also not get views because people don't want to see that um, at all. Again, with the shadows, if you are stuck, like I said, in a restaurant or something, if you can't pull this out, because obviously you don't want them to know that you're there, there is other ways, obviously, step off to the side, kind of make sure that you're farther away from what you're shooting, make sure that you um, just be very careful and be mindful of their lighting. Um, a lot of places have very yellow lighting, and I can show you some tips. Um, I have an iPhone, so if you have a Droid, I'm sure there's other tips that um, I was meant to look up today on how to adjust the lighting on your phone so that you don't like capture just basic the lighting in the room. Um, Manfrotto was that company that I was talking about. This is their lighting. This one is pretty cool. It just recently came out. It attaches onto their iPhone holder. And what it will do is it has eight, uh, four filters to it. And you can actually change its uh, softness, harshness, things like that um, with filters. It also is an LED light, so it doesn't burn out. None of that, like there was back with like film cameras. Um, it's really, really nice. It just, it's very small too, by the way. It's only about this big, so it could fit in your purse. So it's, it, or travel bag, whatever. It's, it's very, very, very small. And it's got really nice direct light. So you can do direct light if you are doing not a person. <laughs> That's the thing, is that that more direct light you want more on a subject like food or something like that. Something that's not moving as much, I should say. The triangle is really good if you're doing video because then you're able to move and all the light will hit you in all the spots that you move to. Does anybody have any questions about lighting? It's pretty self-explanatory. The bad part is the yellow lighting in people's houses and, and restaurants and stuff. That's the worst to get around. Um, I know this, like, my phones, like, an iPhone, so, like, you have a choice in, like, backgrounds or, like, color coordinates. They yeah. do, and that was one of the tips I was going to show you is on your iPhone. Let me see. Or I'm sure other smartphones. Yeah. Here, let me show you real quick. So, I was going to go into this anyways. If it will come up. There we go. So, if you go into your camera, you will actually be able to direct the, the light by pressing and holding on the screen, if you see that little box that comes up. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, well, well the three, yeah, the three uh, circles on the bottom. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So you're able to change into what is more like an instant to transfer process, right? So these are more like filters after or beforehand. So if you want to do something like, it'll pick up the lighting that way. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to also focus a point, it's press and hold. And it will also draw the lighting to that point too. So if, if you're in a certain situation where you're only um, like at a concert and here's the crowd and it's dark and the lighting is up here, but the spotlight's here on the singer, you can actually direct your focal point of the shutter to the singer just by pressing down and holding. And it will actually bring just the concentration down. If you have a 6S also, I do not have 6S, but the live photo, um, you can also do the same thing with that too. If you, if you know what live photo is, it records a second and a half before and a second and a half after you take the photo. You can kind of do the same thing that way too. By the way, I have a cool app that if you do not have a success, the app does the same thing. <laughs> so I could actually show that to you. And then of course, you know, in things like this, you can slide quickly side to side with video and your slow-mo and time lapse and a panogram. And it, pen o and square 
square though, you know? Instagram changed and they're not going to do squares anymore. They're not just squares anymore. So I don't know how much longer squares going to stick around <laughs> um, now that Instagram changed. Um, but I'll see. So you also have your timer, things like that in here. Um, another tip also, if you're shooting high action like a concert, turn on the video and then use the shutter to take the photo because you won't get that awkward mouth open, um, waving hand where it's blurry, anything like that. So if you start to shoot the video, you'll see a circle come up here. A lot of people ask me, what's that circle for? That's actually a shutter. So if you are recording, like we're recording right now, I could take up, I could snap like that. It'll take the picture and then it will, of course, um, show up in my photos. So if I go back to photos, it'll show the video and then the photo I took in the middle of it. So if you're shooting high action or a lot of movement, like a concert or somebody very exuberantly talking and their errands are going everywhere and you have blurriness and they're moving and you can see it, you can actually sh get around that that way. So um, well, while I have this in, we're going to do some fun apps. That works on the Android. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to do much research on an Android. I apologize for the Android users. I, I haven't had a droid for a few years, and I know their technology has really upped in the last few years with the, their cameras. So, um... I apologize that I didn't do too much research on their new little secrets and tips. But they did always have a shutter speed on there, too, so that you can always shoot a video and then take a picture in the middle of the video. Um, like I said, that'll definitely help you. Okay, I'm going to skip over Instagram, unless anybody really has a question about Instagram. Going back to lighting Yes. Mm -hmm. And tungsten, uh, tungsten light is, is probably the best light to shoot in. Uh, so you can get LEDs that are really close to that. They're, they're in the blue boxes. Or whatever right. Huh. That's a good idea. I did not know that. I know a lot of people, too, if you have, like, the hue bulbs in your house, which are um, made by Philips, they are a home automated uh, bulbs, you can actually set them up to perfectly match your uh, what you're photographing and um, save that as a setting so that you're constantly, um, uh, whenever you can, you could just tell Siri or um, Echo or whatever that you're using in your house to set up the podcasting lights or the vlogging lights and they'll automatically turn them on. So you can, if you have a home automation system, that's something too that you can always just do a light tester and find out. Which there is an app for that. There is a light testing app, believe it or not, which, uh, yeah, <laughs> if you still want to use a light tester, I still shoot DSLR sometimes, so I still use it too. All right, so we're going to skip over Instagram, like I said, unless you have any questions about Instagram. Okay. All right, so my favorite apps is... Of course, Layout, Hyperlapse, and Boomerang are all part of Instagram's family. So if you do not have those, I suggest you can uh, play around with those. Boomerang, sorry, my notifications are going off. <laughs> um, hyperlapse, of course, is like your speed up, slow down video. You can do shoot a slow-mo, shoot a fast-paced one without doing the time-lapse and um, so forth. You can actually go right into Instagram and post straight to uh, from that app. Layout is multiple photos in one, um, which can obviously save to your phone, then to Facebook, Instagram, anything like that. Boomerang is that really cool one that you've been seeing where people are like moving back and forth um, very quickly. Um, I have an example from a few weeks ago, if after you want to see it, um, it was two champagne glasses toasting, and it just kept going back and forth and back and forth. Um, that's that app. 
you can record something like 10 seconds long and it's just that movement repeated over and over again. So it's pretty cool. Um, the first one I'm going to show is Adobe program. So if you have Adobe, Adobe Creative Suite right now, um, you have access to all of their apps at a paid level. Um, there are some free features to this phone, this or to this app. This one is called, by the way, Spark Post. Um, there are free versions of it um, that will get you to a certain point, but then if you own, like I said, a Creative Cloud membership, you get the full access to it. This is a fast way to take your photos and add a cool text overlay. So you know how like you're seeing people's ads pop up all the time and it's something like text and that's it and it's their photograph? That, that's it. Like it turned out amazing. Um, this is one I did just a few weeks ago when I was playing around. That, that's it. Like I was able to take the photo, um, touch it up, add the text. It was one minute and it was up. I didn't have to fuss with finding a font. I didn't have to fuss with color layout. It's very simple to do. Um, this was one I just did for the Jagoff. Uh, they took the photo. I took the photo from them. I added the text, sent it back. It was two minutes. I didn't even leave my hammock for this one. I actually did it straight from my phone and uh, on my hammock. So that was pretty cool. So, um, and like I said, I'm able to do stuff like, uh, you know, any type of fast post to Instagram. And this, again, takes a couple minutes, and I'll show you how to do one. So if you start with your photo, we'll do one from this morning. How about that? So we can choose one from just this last session. And it'll allow you to choose a size. So you can do it to Pinterest, Facebook ad, a blog post. This adjusts the sizes all for you. So if you are seriously into social media marketing, this is huge. This is one of the simplest ways, just you won't have to mess with it. Um, sizes on ads um, and Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest are very important because they only, not on the mobile site, but on the actual desktop site, it only gives you that amount of space to capture somebody. So if they see something that's only like a person's hand, the chances of them tapping on that photo to actually seeing the whole photo is slim to none. Unless you're actually, like you captured them in the tweet. So you kind of have to pay attention to the sizes. Um, also, this is for printing too, but we'll just stick with the original. And then of course you can just, you know, you can change the text. And then, of course, resize it if you want to. And then change the colors. You can kind of do something fun with it if you want. I'm just, of course, breezing through this. You can change your fonts and change, like, a shape behind it. Like, if you want to put a circle in, something like that. Of course, this is, of course, you, you just have to play around and done. So now, the only annoying part to this is the hashtag in the corner. That is the most annoying part to this. And I will be honest with you, I cut it out every single time. So I will hit save image, save to camera roll. I will back back out. I will then go into photos. I will then pull it up. And I will edit it out. So I will go back in and cut it. Yes, that will change the size, so please be careful if you're doing that to Facebook, Twitter, sized photos. It will change it. Why is that changing on me? <laughs> That's not the photo. <laughs> that was from weeks ago. Um, <laughs> that is, so it will, so of course I was able to cut that out right there. You can take the hashtag out um, right in your regular photo editing kind of um, software. So that again is a, a spark post. I love it because I can be at an event and like I said, I could take a picture of what's going on and I can have it up on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter before KDK even has it uploaded. Um, 
and again, it's great for, and if you are not a graphic designer or you do not hire a graphic designer, this is the best way instead of studying fonts, color schemes, things like that, very simple to do. If you do not know like Photoshop Illustrator, it's very simple to learn. And of course, Adobe has a gigantic amount of, of apps right now because in between tablet use and phone use going up, they're going more into apps along with Photoshop Illustrator, InDesign, all of that. So again, you have something like Photoshop Mix. Again, this is with uh, Adobe's paid subscription you get so much, which I'll see if this is even open. Oh, there we go. So you can actually go in here and start planning a project and go through. Um, this one I don't use as much because it's not the same as Photoshop on your computer. It's very limited. Um, but on the one that they made for iPad is pretty sweet. Um, you can actually take pictures of people and do things like give them smiles and give them rosy cheeks and flatten their hair and do all this stuff right in the app. So if you are majorly, and then you can take it into the Illustrator app in there and do a whole page layout and things like that. So it's very different um, depending on what you're using. And I'm about to die on this. Obviously, I did not charge my phone. Um, <laughs> So the last one I want to show is Polaroid, and hopefully I'll have enough juice to get through this. This is that one I was going to show. I have not played around with this. If you want to, I have not played around with it at all. This one will show you, will take a second and a half before you take the photo and a second and a half after. So if you do not have a 6S and you want to do like live photos like they show, this is an app that will do it. So that is that. And my last one is PicMonkey. If you love Instagram, you'll love PicMonkey. It is almost exactly the same, but it has some really cool features. Oh, here's one I took last night. So I took this last night with my phone, took it into PicMonkey, and um, was able to touch it up, give it a little bit more vibrant color. Um, but I can also still do things like add a sticker, kind of make it a little bit more fun. Uh, um, that's something right now that Snapchat's really huge because everybody's downloading their Snapchat stories because it's got the stickers and the emojis and everything right on it, this app can do that for you. Um, sometimes it's very hard with Snapchat because it's blurry, it's not high quality, because it's a fast moving video and they actually record it at a lower resolution so that it can be fast. Um, and so it's blurry, it's not very nice looking all the time, I wouldn't suggest using it for like an ad on your Facebook page, but this kind of is a nice substitute for that. Um, those are my favorite apps. Splash is another one too. We're messing around with Splash. I think it needs a few bit more work. So if you want to ever shoot 360 video or photo from your phone, you know those ones where if you a person moves the phone that moves with them, Splash is doing it. It needs to be updated. It's very choppy. So you can actually shoot 360 video from your phone. But I think... Like I said, they need to work on it a little bit better um, than what it is. We found that there are parts of it whenever you are spanning that it will black out and the logo will show up. So it's a little bit um, it, it, like they need to touch it up. So that is that. Does anybody have any questions about editing? I gave some fun ones. Does anybody else have any ones that they love to use? No? Prisma is uh, is awesome. I did put it with Instagram just because it is um, being very well known right now. If you are not, I am not using it. I have not used it yet. But basically it, it turns photographs into paintings and you can do things like that um, from what I can see from it. I have not used it yet. It's um, pretty much what, you know. Yeah. Right. So it's great for that. I've seen them where they can adjust brush sizes and things like that right on there. Yeah. So you can kind of turn any photograph artistic. And of course, oh, and there are a ton of places to print. Um, by the way, I meant to tell you guys that. Uh, that's a little side note from this. If you are in love with an Instagram photo um, 
and you want to print it, there are hundreds of apps online right now that you can print from your Instagram account. I just tested one. I won't recommend it unless you just want something fun to use. Um, Paraboo is what it's called. Um, they will turn your Instagram photos into a calendar. <laughs> And they literally sent me a stack this thick of like 30 some of my Instagram photos for like six bucks as a promo. Um, but they weren't high, they weren't um, high quality prints or anything, but they were still in square shape with the filters. They looked really nice. So there are apps out there that are now, you they'll log into your Instagram account. You can select the photos that you want. And then a week later, they show up in a print form. So it's kind of cool, like on cardstock and things like that. So if you ever want to print from Instagram, there are companies that are doing it now through apps. And they're not that expensive. Like I said, I got a stack for like six bucks as a promo with a promo code. Um, also, again, though, if you do have the chance to work in Adobe, obviously Photoshop is high end. That's the right way to go. If you really want to touch up your photos, not everybody has access to that. Not everybody is a graphic designer or a photographer. So... It does take some knowledge. And also, the new pricing plan for Adobe isn't for everybody. Um, to just do the photography account, I think I just looked, it was like 20 some dollars, including tax, a month. So you have to actually, that's their cloud service. Um, so uh, also to let you know, too, is this, I, this class, I won this session, is more for... Um, which is my first do and don't, um, which I might not have put up there because I wrote this late uh, at night, is don't let this be a substitute for your personal photos. So I say that in your brand, if you're starting a business, if you are the face of your business, do not take your own photograph. I highly recommend hiring that person for a headshot. They are the professional. They will show up with a good camera. They'll show up with lighting, and they will edit it. Um, if you, That is my biggest thing is don't, like, this is, my whole point of this was, oh, I go to a restaurant, I want to take a picture of my food. That doesn't look horrible. Don't let it be your self photo if you are working on a brand. Um, leave that to the professionals, obviously. That was my first do not. <laughs> Do not set this up in the park and then take the picture and expect it to be like, that's, that's it. That's going up on my blog. It looks amazing. Um, so don't point and shoot is my first one. Do not point and shoot. This comes more of setting the scene. So I have these arrangements, and I all of a sudden they're here and they're here. That's not very pleasing to the eye. You want to make sure that you set the scene. No dirty napkins in there. No people's faces, arms, hands, anything like that. You want to make sure that there's a visual cue, like a sense of perception. Um, you don't want to shoot from far away unless you intend on cropping up. The problem with that is, is that you'll lose definition. So the it's like any camera. When you shoot from far away and then you try to crop it, if your resolution is off, it becomes blurry. So you want to make sure that you zoom in and you get really tight on that. Do not use the zoom on your iPhone or your Droid. It always turns blurry. So it's just the way that those cameras were designed. That's the way it is. Like, till they update the technology, if you're shooting from back here and you use that little, you know, you pinch in your zoom, it's going to be blurry. There's really no way around that. Um, even the lenses don't help. Um, so really get up close to it and arrange it. Really look at what you're about to photograph. Don't, and look at it from an outside perspective. Don't just say, oh, that looks right. There you go. If you're at a restaurant or some type of um, function, feel free to arrange. They don't always make the dishes look the best. You may have to prop up the sandwich, stuff a piece of napkin underneath there. You have to fix it a little bit to make the picture look pleasing, obviously. Um, which is the next one, arrange your food or subject matter. Put, if you took a bite of the chocolate cake already, please put down the fork. It's, a, it's an accent. It shows an action. It shows, even though that fork is dirty, it shows that you can see the crumbs. You can see the, the, if the cake is moist, things like that, you're portraying a story from it. 
Um, watch your shadows. I've touched on that. Stand away. Don't block the light. Um, do you get a logo or a scene. So if you're at something, and for instance, a restaurant, I, I draw that a lot because I shoot a lot of food. <laughs> As you'll see in a second, a lot of my examples are food. Um, get the logo in there. Get something to brand them. If you're a blogger and you want them to know that you're reviewing them, they'll see that. They'll see it as they're flipping through Instagram or they'll see it through there and they'll be like, oh my gosh, that is me. And put your drink next to their logo. Arrange their menu right next to the, your plate so that you see they see something that's them. Um, and do not get anyone else in the scene. I say this like, obviously it's unavoidable if you're shooting something like the arts festival or if you're shooting something like a like a, a party scene um but don't get somebody directly in your table get crop it up so that they're out so you won't see them um those are my major do's and don'ts is just be you kind of have to be mindful of where you are in the arrangement of the the thing that you're shooting um Okay, so good versus bad. Oh. So good versus bad. So the top one obviously is bad. There's just stuff. It's not arranged. It's not, it doesn't show anything. Um, you zoom in, it's now just the food. Like there's no, the beer glasses off to the side, the, the paper napkins. <laughs> like you went from showing it being not so classy to being a little bit classier. And kind of zooming in plus you get that taste of that food like you can see the salt you can kind of go that way with it mm -hmm. oh you're just okay so but if you are shooting a scene so this is something cool so remember how I mentioned the lighting thing this is what I was talking about so this was the regatta I was right off to the side yes I had to get people in it they didn't know I was taking a picture but I wasn't the only one <laughs> um, but for the lighting for this, because my camera on my phone was going like, is the lighting here? Is the lighting here? Is the lighting there? <coughs> I had to take the lighting and put it here. So it would take away, it wouldn't focus the focus here. It wouldn't focus here, which this projector doesn't do justice. It focused on the band. So this looks nice and crisp, whereas this looks a little bit different. That one I just showed that I took of last night, I focused in on the beer bottle so that the background was all fuzzy. Um, the original, the updated one, I blurred it a little bit more in the background. I just fancied that up. Um, but the original, I literally, the beer bottle was crystal clear and the background was fuzzy. And it was just by holding in that box around the beer bottle that it focused right there. And this is kind of the same thing. So this was nice. It set the scene. So I was here. I was able to put this up on my Instagram within a few moments. Um, and I was able to show. This was a high action scene. He was dancing. People were dancing. This was spinning. So I actually shot this off the video with the shutter. So you, it, you can, again, the projector's not doing it justice as the phone would. Um, but you can see that, like, there's no like him moving around. There's no awkward face movements. There's nothing like that. And again, good food versus bad food. Here I even got a person's arm in it. Um, so you just want to tighten it up. And again, something like the top one being bad with like just silverware thrown everywhere to the bottom one. And the drink is showing like how would you want to shoot the drink? You don't want to be straight on. You want to be a little angled to the top. So you see that what's inside of it along with the menu. It makes it look longer too. That glass was only this tall. <laughs> so it makes it look more appealing. Um, I kind of went over that. Oh, my only secret that I didn't tell. So your headphones um, double as a selfie button. If not, everybody knows that. Um, if you got an iPhone, those headphones that came with it, the ear pods, if you actually set your camera up and plug it in and you press where the speaker is, that's a shutter. So you can actually put it up on something, step back, 
hold that earbuds down in your hand and take a selfie without having to set the 10 seconds and then try to make sure you're in view and everything you can make sure you're all framed up and press the button and it takes the picture that's a cool little secret <laughs> and oh who the hell am I um, I am co-organizer of PodCamp. My name is Amanda. I run Bold Pittsburgh. Uh, we are a local blog. We highlight everything fun. We were an online magazine that switched to blogging and podcasting. We have ebooks coming out this year and a new web show. So we are completely a Pittsburgh media company. Um, we do about uh, three blogs a week pieces a week of fun things to do in the city. So um, that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I haven't taken either of myself for a long time, but when I started, they used to say um, it's best to have a white background because you don't want to distract the person who's watching you. Okay, recently I had to do a video and I didn't know what to do, so I got my I wouldn't recommend straight white because that can make you look flushed, like not give any color, basically. Um, I would recommend a plain background, however, like bricks or uh, an off-white wall or even colored, like just regular paint. Um, I would go with more plain. If you look at a lot of people's promotion photos... Um, you'll notice that they're either in a field and it's just them. That's because the background is plain. It's not distracting. There's nothing else catching the person's eye except for them. Um, you'll also notice that a lot of time they're outside against like a brick wall or sitting on a porch or something like that. So plain over just start white. I mean, that's a, that's a little bit tough, especially if your lighting was crazy. I mean, you could be casting a shadow on that wall. You could also be casting a shadow on your face that's bouncing. The, the light bounces off a of white. Um, so it could very well, the, the lighting would have been the biggest thing affected. Um, I would have got more plain, just like a brick wall outside. If, if you Google people who do, or if you look at other bloggers, or um, other people who do a lot of self promo, they um, their photos are always plain. Like, yeah, well, mine's not very plain, but <laughs> there's not too much distracting from it. You know what I mean? So. Bed sheets make really great backgrounds. Yeah, bed sheets are good too. Yeah. Just get a queen or a king size black sheet with solid color. Something complimentary. If you ever wanted to, to, there's uh, great tutorials on Pinterest. I just built a backdrop for another event where we were building a selfie station. So I was taking people's pictures. Um, it was made out of PVC pipe and a bed sheet, and it cost me t uh, like $8 to make. Um, and I strung stars up and like did this whole big elaborate backdrop of, and it cost me like literally under 10 bucks with the craft supplies to make the stars. Um, so it's just PVC pipe and you have to cut the PVC pipe obviously, but, um, there's great like things online to, on how to build a backdrop. And there's even some great ideas on what shades of color to use. Like I would say a blue too also would have done instead of the white. I'm not a droid person anymore. Um, Google Photos is great. Um, I'd worry about your security uh, more than anything. Um, just because if your Gmail, if your Google account is ever hacked, they can get into your photos um, through Google. It used to be through Google Plus. Is that still true? That you, some of them, that you can see your Google Photos no matter what you took through Google Plus or no? 
Yeah, back when I had a droid once, I had that very unfortunate thing where I took a bunch of photos and I had them automatically going from my droid into my Google account as a backup system. And I opened my Google Circles one day, and my Google Plus one day, and there's all my photos from my droid. So um, I, y some of them were. So you have a lot more control if you're on an Android device. I do from the iPhone and have model update, but I've never seen like yeah. an in one pop up. But it, it kind of interfaces with Drive now too. Yeah. See, I'm not a Google backup person. That would be more that's why I'm asking you. You do a lot of Google backup. So they have a nice thing with Google Photos. I know on the iPhone they were just plugging this on a commercial where it'll actually go back and delete them off of your phone with the notes. Now I kind of triplicate things that Everything's going to both iCloud and and Google Photos, and I think I had a third one in there for a bit too. So I'm like I'm kind of like double back. Oh, Facebook does it on there. Mm -hmm. but, um, so I'm not going to use that thing because I'm afraid it's going to take it off of iCloud. So I also know that space used to be a big thing with Google too. That if you went over a certain amount, it stopped backing up. But that's like we're talking a lot of gigs. Yeah. Like um, like Dropbox is another one where I know a lot of people back up the Dropbox. It's a paid service after a certain amount. Um, um, with the photos, if you do the, the standard version, it's unlimited. Um, but if you like want the high quality yeah. of what your phone is taking, then that actually takes like whatever you pay for Google Drive. Basically, it takes right. out of the benefit. With anything, I would be weary of security um, more than anything. Um, I know a lot of people who do not only a cloud-based backup, but they'll do a physical backup. And then, or they'll do two physical backups and make sure that their physical backup is locked in a fire safe. Um, especially if that's all your things. If you're shooting like me, if you didn't notice my numbers are up over 3,000, yes, I pay for iCloud. <laughs> um, everything is backed up to iCloud for me um, automatically. I do backup every night. Um, but I also have iCloud Photos turned on, which automatically takes everything up the second you take it. Um, but I also do a physical backup about once a month. Um, you can share mine. Yeah. So everything comes from my phone up to iCloud <laughs> into uh, photos on my Mac sitting at home. And then that uh, sometimes I move that over to the Drobo, which is redundant in multiple drives. And also everything on my computer goes up to back place, which I pay five bucks a month. That, and, that's, and I do video work, so that's a lot of stuff. I mean, I just had to reset it, so it, it's like waiting for about 20 terabytes to upload, you know, in the background. It takes a while, but other than that, like, if you're just doing photos, it's not nearly as much as that. I like, highly, highly recommend it. I also, once a so month. Backblaze. Backblaze? Backblaze. Yeah. And there's other ones like, um, what's the one they always advertise? Um, it's hard to see. Uh, oh, um, oh, God, my friend works for him in Boston. I actually have a friend. I know which one you're talking about. Like, I can't think of what it's called. There's a, there's a couple other ones too. But back like Chemi it's it's not chemistry. It's something like that. Yeah. Oh, no. We have to look it up. But I don't um, remember. Well, Backblaze is nice because you can attach external drives. Whatever that one is, um, like it's, I, don't, I think it's everything that's on the computer itself and not like I plug in a drug bow and it uploads it. Also, what I do is... Um, I uh, I erase my phone like what do I, because I take so many pictures out in places. I tend to take anywhere from twenty to thirty photos per press release. I end up using ten of them. So those thirty that I didn't use, I don't usually keep. Uh, they get deleted and thrown in the trash. Even if it's an evergreen subject, and I can pull that piece up like a month from now and post the photo, um, I'll still delete it. There was one night I was walking across uh, six, uh, across the Roberto Clemente Bridge. I took about 20 some photos because it was pitch dark out with just the light shining on the overpass of the, of the bridge. Um, I took probably about 20 different angled shots. I used four. So those other 16 I just deleted. Um, and I do that once a month because if you didn't see, I got up to over 3,000 photos, which is rough on my phone. It's also rough because if you're trying to find one photo, you have to go back through. Um, do you have an iPhone? Siri help you. Siri can also pull pictures for you if you ask her to. 
she said if you ask her to show you all photos from a certain date or show you photos from a certain month, it will. He's the next one. Okay. Um, she will show them to you. So you can say, hey, Siri, show me pictures from uh, downtown Pittsburgh on June 12th. As long as your timestamp and your location is turned on in your settings, she will. So you can kind of also quickly search. That's a side tidbit that if you're ever like overwhelmed with thousands of photos, that's kind of like a side tip to do that. Um, anybody else have any questions? I'll be downstairs if you have any other questions because obviously...